Don't jump on me, don't jump, don't do it, don't do it. He's taking drag. Ryan, he's taking drag. Beans in Dallas, Fort Worth, baby. Whoa, 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 what is going on, YouTube? We are out with the Guggen Squad darts, and we got a couple of them. We got a few packs there. We got different colors here. We got a couple colors over here. We got a larger size right here. Probably not going to be useful at this pond today. There's some baby fish in here, but we're going to try and catch them for you guys. I'm going to show you the rod. I'm going to show you the reel. I'm going to show you the line. I'm going to show you the technique. And if you're not me, you'll probably catch them. But if you're me, you probably won't catch any because that typically happens when I try and film these videos and show educational stuff. So we'll just rely on telling you how to throw it. And if we catch one, that's great. And if we don't, that's also great. You hear? We've got some awesome colors, though. 5 inch, this is going to be my go-to size, 5 inch for the bites. We also offer a 6 inch, we got a 7 inch, these are the big boys right here. This is the 7 inch in California Crawl, I think it's like 5 or 6 to a pack in the bigger size, you get a lot more in the smaller size, let me see, I just want to, I want to be correct here, so I don't get criticized in the comments, we know how much y'all like to correct, right, yeah. Alright, so you get 5 if you get the 7 inch, now dude, I'm telling you what, if you get the 5 inch pack, I'm pretty sure you get like 10 maybe not one two three four five ten you get ten this out of all the colors I have might be my favorite at the moment this is the gizzard shad green gizzard shad but it's got a nice flash uh, my favorite color to throw flukes in the past has been like a solid white color and so I can't wait to get uh, some of those in hand because I'm gonna definitely be throwing those Dugan Squad darts. If you want to grab some of these, 10% uh, down in the description. Check them out. Today's episode is sponsored by the Guggen Squad. But I'm, I mean, I don't care if you buy these or not. I'm going to use them. I love them. I'm going to throw them. You do you. You get whatever flukes you want. Now, you got a spot for your hook right up there on top so that it sits rested in there. And you can be weedless. You can get through the grass. It's going to be perfect. Soft plastic jerk baits. This is what you throw when you're not getting too many bites, man. And the bites on this are so much fun. They usually hang out just subsurface. You're kind of popping them like a regular old jerk bait, giving them some time to just rest, and they, they just sink ever so slowly. Those bass come up and smash it, and then the next time you give it a pop, we'll, we'll talk more when we fish. These things are going to be epic. They got the Guggen Squad logo on there. They got some scale design. It's pretty slick. They got a vertical split in the tail. Just something a little bit different for you guys. Let's go ahead and start rigging things up, starting with the fact I got to put new line on this reel. I really don't have to, but I want to. Devin bought me some of this rainbow colored braid, and it's purely for show, literally for nothing else. I think it's like super heavy braid, not really applicable to what I want to do today, but I'm going to tie a lead or not. We'll talk more about that. That way, if you guys have like straight braid on one of your setups, but you want to throw something like a fluke, you might have better results with a leader line, which is just a, essentially a, a second line attached to your main line uh, to get the job done, right? You can kind of tie a leader of whatever line. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm going to line up the spool and we're going to actually fish, hopefully, today. Starting things off, stripping the line, because this has been on here for a while. Not much left on the spool. And then we are going to tie on the new, the new braid. All right, it looks like we have made it to our mono or fluoro backing. I don't know what I put on this reel a while ago, but that uh, helps prevent your braid from slipping if you add a little bit of like mono or fluoro, just like enough to kind of cover the spool one time is really plenty. Before you go for your braid, if you just tie straight braid to the spool, if you're to hook up into a really big fish, the braid can kind of slip on that spool. Uh, and it doesn't really happen with the fluoro. So with the mono or the fluoro line, it's just got that little extra stick factor, I guess. You could also kind of like apply a piece of tape over your spool or do a couple other things, but apparently I can't talk and do this at the same time. So let me try and fix this. There we go. I'm going to uh, get the line and go through all the eyelets and then I'm gonna tie my braid and then I'm gonna start cranking this stuff on the spool. Okay, so I just tied a double uni knot. I'm tightening it up now, boom. And I'm just going to chop off those tag ends, then I'm going to start cranking the line on. Let's see how this goes. Set the line up over there. Hold it tight between the fingers. Yeah, there we go. Okay, just stay right above it. Sick. Look at that braid on the spool. That's so crazy. Dude, this line is so thick. It's already filled up almost the whole spool. That is insane. This is like the heaviest braid ever. It's going to be so hard to cast a dart with this. This is like 80 pound braid. I don't even know. Ridiculous. All right. I think I'm going to go with like a 10 or 12 pound leader to tie on though. That way them fishies don't see the bright colors. I literally just bought this for like Instagram reels because like when you cast a reel with this rainbow line, usually you get views. It's pretty funny. It's a hundred pound. This is a hundred pound braid. <laughs> what an idiot. What am I doing? hundred pound braid to 12 pound fluorocarbon. This is 
just about pointless. You don't ever need a 100 pound braid on your bait caster unless you're like, I don't know, catching 200 pound fish. Usually I would just throw straight like 12 or 15 pound fluorocarbon with something like a fluke. I'm gonna do another double uni knot and then we're gonna get the stuff in the water. This is funny, this is comical. 100 pound braid with a fluke in a pond where there's really not many big fish. By the way, whenever you're trying to tie a double uni knot or, or I think quite a few leader knots just with uh, different line types, it's best to have about the same line diameter, meaning like a 100 pound braid is really, is, is like a lot thicker than this 12 pound fluoro. So it makes it harder to tie your, your leader knot, but we're just, we're just making it happen for the tube here. There's my uni with the fluoro. Now I'm gonna tie my uni with the braid and that makes it a double uni knot and you just cinch them together. And that's what tightens it up. Uh, I'm not getting too scientific. I'm just going through like four or five times. I might normally do like seven or th that's probably what a lot of people you see recommend. But I'm not too worried about this line breaking or this knot, I should say. See, it's even hard to tighten to pull together because of this line size difference. This is gonna be good. Oh boy. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. Tighten down, chop off the tag ends, and then we are just about good to go. Thank goodness, because I've literally sat in this parking lot for 20 minutes. Ready to fish the new darts. By the way, these just dropped. They literally just went on sale. GoogingSquad.com. If you haven't got any of them, uh, you got to act fast. You got to gotta act fast. So they will sell out in your favorite color, that is for sure. Next up, let's show you the hook and how we're rigging these. I'm going to go with a Guggen Squad 4 aught hammer hook. I've used uh, like as low as two aughts. You'd be fine with pretty much anything from the two to four range. The, the four is a little big, I would say, but um, I really don't care. You know, I'm, I'm giving you guys the information and you just, you know, it's one of those do as I say, not as I do type of things. <laughs> 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon is gonna be your best all around line. You want fluoro because it sinks, so it allows the flukes to drop down a little bit. If you're throwing a fluke on mono or braid, like how I have braid as a main line, it's not gonna get down low, and you might want that because those fish are gonna be hanging out a little bit lower oftentimes. In the spring and summer, they're gonna come right up to the surface for them, so it won't be as big of an issue. But when the bite is slow, you gotta kinda get down on their level sometimes and really entice them into biting. So that is why fluoro makes the most sense. Now, I just tied my Palomar knot. That is my typical knot to my hooks and whatnot. <laughs> what not? Essentially, the way you rig these is just like a weightless Texas rig. For one, you wanna make sure it's gonna be right side up after you rig it. So what you're gonna wanna do is have the bottom of your dart facing the hook. You're gonna go through until you get to that corner there, and you're gonna bring it out through the bottom of the nose, all right? Then we are gonna feed this, oh, phone call. That's Ryan rigged. Actually, I'm gonna answer that real quick. Hey, 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 what's the word? I'm about to head that way. I just wanted to see what the, the, floral, the, the floral one was. Dope. It looks awesome. There's a lot of people hanging out. That is Ryan Rigg, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the way. What you're going to want to do after that last step is you're going to want to feed it all the way up to this kind of corner here, right? You're going to go up here and start to rotate it 180 degrees. So now it's going to sit on that shelf there. That's going to prevent it from just sliding down the hook when you get bites. And this hook is going to sit pretty flush. And this is where you might see that a 2 watt might be a little bit better for this bait because it's just going to be a little bit tighter and closer to the body, a little bit smaller. Uh, but this hook is also going to be a little bit heavier, so it's going to help it drop down a little bit. You want to push the hook through the bait right here where the back of the hook is because that's going to cause there to be no flex in this bait. I'll show you what I mean. You don't want to stretch it. See, it sits in there perfect and the bait isn't like all messed up. Sometimes you stretch the bait out too much and what's going to happen is like it'll look like this. You know, if you go in on the wrong spot, you'd stretch the bait. That's that's no good. Also. If you go in way back here, if I go in like closer to the tail, what happens is the bait is going to be scrunched. Watch this, it's going to look terrible. Look it, it won't even, it doesn't even work right. So you want to line that up before you put the hook through. I'm completely deteriorating this bait before I even throw it, by the way, in the name of science for you guys. And you want that hook to sit in that hook slot there at the top. That way it's not like sticking up like this. If it's sticking up like this, which is going to happen after every cast or every 10 casts, it just varies, but that hook's going to come up. What you want to do is just push the body up and you want to get that hook back into the uh, crevice there, the crevasse. That way you're completely weedless and you can work through the grass where you want to kind of target to get these fish's attention. They like to hang out and ambush prey along those grass lines. One last thing I'll say before we cast this thing, because I know we are getting antsy, is that you would like to fish these in clear water. This is really a clear water tactic. If you've got some muddier stained water, probably just best to throw another bait. We might talk about that as we throw. Let's see if this thing will even cast with this line. This is looking absolutely crazy. I am about ready. Let's go. I put on my story that I was going to be fishing and I had a couple packs to give away if anybody wanted to meet me out here. So we may have some homies linking up with us along with Ryan Rigged. We're about to go for the first cast. Now, before you even mention it, trust me, I already know. 
I'm missing my tension knob and the bait is dropping pretty fast. So what that means is it might not be the best, the absolute best for castability, <laughs> but that's okay. I've got the brakes on the two setting on this SLX DC reel. You already know the line specs and uh, I've got probably four or five feet of leader tied on here, which is uh, too much or too little, depending on who you talk to. I think it's great. And then I'm using the Guggen Squad Go To rod, which is going to be one of the best rods for your fluke style baits. See, the thing is, with this soft plastic, but that heavier hammer hook, you're going to want something with enough backbone to set the single hook, right? It's not treble, so you don't necessarily want like a cranking rod or something with a, a real slow tip. And then also, you don't necessarily need something like the muscle rod, like a seven and a half foot heavy extra fast, because I like a little bit of a tip, right? Just a little bit of play. That way it kind of pops that jerk bait a little bit better. So let's see what happens on the first cast and if we don't get a backlash. This is a DC reel, so it should help in the wind. But look at how like thick the line is on here. We definitely got to get it wet and kind of crank it on here tight a couple times. And I think it should perform better, but it looks like absolute trash on the spool. This is going to be a fun first cast. Okay, not terrible. Like I say, I want to get this line wet and kind of tighten it up on the spool. I'm not going to waste a cast though. Let's go ahead and pop it. Oh, it feels awesome on the go-to rod. Wow. And you might be able to detect bites even a little bit easier with this rainbow colored line because you'll be able to see it move if a fish grabs hold of it. Now, lastly, one of the things I love to do with these flukes but is not going to apply at this very moment is fish with polarized sunglasses. I left those at home, but oftentimes you can see the fluke darting around just subsurface and as soon as it disappears you know you can set that hook because a fish just grabbed it oh dude this thing's looking good what's going on man what's up buddy not much weston julio man or july nice to meet you dude nice to meet you buddy you fished here before i brought a bunch of these if you want to throw some otherwise you do your thing i'm, <laughs> hey, I'm down man i actually don't have any in my arsenal yet i have two pumps no usually i'm doing the same thing yeah go ahead yeah Throwing it on the go-to rod. Dude, Julio's rocking the gold hey, go-to. You know, this is the perfect rod the for the flukes. Too, you know? That's legit. <laughs> uh, spooled up this rainbow braid on here. It's a hundred pound, dude. It's stupid. Yeah. Go if right you watch there. those Instagram reels, everyone's doing like the slow motion like cast with like colored line and getting a lot of yeah. views. So it's like, you know, whatever it takes to build the brand and get exposure, I'm trying to uh, partake. So the reels in general are what's getting a lot of the, are what's growing people's accounts faster than ever. Really? All the reels, yeah, 100%. They're trying to take over TikTok. You'd think it's wasting time, yeah. but I'll sit down and I'll watch like an hour of reels and I save all the ones that, they're not fishing, but I'll save all the ones that have, the, if there's a trending song that's going around, I save the song and then I come up with an idea around fishing. And the song is almost what generates the exposure, it seems like, for half these people. Like, okay, I hear this song, I've seen a lot of viral stuff with it. Music what is this person doing? So yeah, usually I'm literally taking the songs and kind of just getting inspiration from other non-fishing. Yeah, I mean, these days a lot of stuff's been done in the videos, so you gotta come up with something different or uh, show, show people something new. But I also think fishing videos and channels are gonna take off this year. There's been a lot more people buying fishing licenses through COVID. So I think there's gonna be, yeah, record numbers by like 10X. There's like 10 million sold apparently, and I think the average is 700,000. Regardless, just more people getting into fishing for the first time because they've got not much else to do, right? And so I think there's gonna be a lot more potential for the channels around fishing. What's up, dude? This is Julio. Julio's Ryan. What's up, man? Joining us for the day. Ryan Rigg just showed up, y'all. Check out both of the boys down in the description. He's throwing more of like that, uh, I think it's California Crawl. California Crawl, it's yes, like It's, it's kind of like a watermelon red flake. We just kind of giving you that California vibe. All right, I was thinking they haven't really been biting too much right here, like zero bites. So, <laughs> so maybe we go to the sunshine real quick. Otherwise, we're thinking the one just right across the street just to see. And if we don't get, if we get kicked out, it's still got an hour before sunset. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. We're thinking maybe try a spot like right down the street. What is going on with the internet today, man? This is not working. I'm trying to make a post. It is looking not super clear. This might not be the best fluke in conditions. All right, well, we're going to give this probably two seconds. Yet yeah, it's about as deep as the green. What was next on the list? <laughs> yes, sir. No fishing? He said there's no fishing. <laughs> no way. I appreciate you. Thank you for being so nice. Yep. Security giving us the pointers. We got coyotes over here and there's no fish in the water apparently. So yeah, bust, bust. I know this is a fluke video, but I'm gonna tie something else on. I gave you all the pointers guys, but yeah, it's not gonna work today. Clear water, right? So if it's uh, if it's a little dirty, yeah. it just doesn't make, doesn't make any noise. You, it, you're almost relying on the lifelike presentation, right? Cause it's, it looks so real that in the clear water it draws them in. If it's a little murky, it's gonna be way better to just throw like a chatterbait or a, a spinnerbait or 
uh, lipless crankbait, little rattle. But now hold on a second. There's a secret passageway. I think it's right here. YouTube don't know nothing about this. Just rolled up, y'all. Semi good clarity. I'm gonna throw the fluke for a second. If they don't hit, I'm probably gonna toss on a clickbait or something. Either one. This one's got a little pop with the shine, and then this one's just kind of like. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, my really? pleasure, dude. Yeah, of course. Like I'm gonna have a clue, but I wonder how cold it is. Pretty cold. I'm curious. I wonder if a jig, a spinner bait. I'm thinking we should switch things up. Like just kind of all throw something different. See what they'll hit. Ooh, I got the lipless crankbait, but I might move a little fast for them to date. What color you got? Me too. Maybe I should try blue, black and blue just to switch it up. I'll go black and blue. That way we're throwing something different. See if they hit. If not, it might be jig season. This is going to cause more vibration in the water with the blade. A little bit of noise from the beads. Kick from the tail. Black and blue color since there's only a foot or two visibility. So something that might stand out a little bit more. We got a white one getting thrown as well. And we got some bluegill colors down the way. So literally we're kind of covering the whole spectrum. Let's get these things in the water quick. Definitely cast easier. It's a lot heavier than that fluke. So with this 100 pound over kill braid i can get a little bit of distance out here go to rod is going to be good for the hook sets again it's a single hook not a treble hook bait so that's the beauty about the go to rod i can tie on the click bait i can tie on the fluke i can tie on a lipless crank and i feel comfortable throwing all those on this thing pretty sick if you want to grab one for yourself 10 percent off in the description code weston let's try and catch some fish on it though there we go we got one we got one right along the rocks on the click bait that did not take long at all ladies and gents see you got to switch it up sometimes i'm telling you what so what i'm doing is i'm casting shallow along the rock if you cast it like at 45, they're probably hanging out along the bank. Look at that, boys. That's a two right there. You ain't coming off, son. That's a sturdy hook on the clickbait. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Black and blue. So, uh, yep. That white's going to work too, though. Same thing. Same thing. Cast and retrieve. Dude, it was just right off the bat, man. I felt a little weight. Subtle bite. It wasn't like a yank. It was more like, okay, I think I feel something on my line. And then, boom, it was swimming. It was trying to go deep with me. It was trying to take that chatterbait, go down there out deep and eat it. I'll see you, little bud. Oh, he's feisty. He's feisty. He's ready to go. Sick. See ya. Here, come hit that cast, Adorian. There might be another one. They might be stacked in that corner. Sometimes when it's cold, they hang out together. Not always. So my last couple casts were like out a little ways. That was like the first one I kind of casted like parallel to the rock. So they might be all up against it. So, you know, anything will do. You'll be fine. Yeah, hit that, hit that area for a minute. And let me try and work where you are at and see if anything happens. If they like this black and blue, I'll give you this one. That's my first fish since the Texas snow apocalypse, y'all. This is a, this is cause for celebration. It has been iced over down here. That is literally my first fish to bite in like two weeks, probably. Well, I had the, I had the bites when I went ice fishing. I got to be careful how hard I set this hook because this is 12 pound fluorocarbon. I really feel comfortable with between 15 and 20 if I'm like hammering hook sets. Sometimes with the 10 and 12, you get a little little feisty, and you might end up snapping your knot or uh, just just kind of breaking off. When you're fishing the stained water like this. A thicker line doesn't really matter. The fish don't get as line shy. It does matter and it doesn't matter, right? You, you can go either way. There's tons of schools of thought on this whole thing, but I like 15 to 20 in the stained for those big single hook baits. You know, if we're rocking treble hooks, I might go 12 pound, I might go 15 pound. But if it's clear water, I usually still don't go any lighter than, than 10 pound. I'm gonna go hit the other side because I, I have a feeling they're kind of, they must be hanging out close to this rock. Even if they're not hanging about, uh, out against it, they might come up and be feeding because there was a reason he was there, you know? Ooh, 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 got him, got him, got him. Okay, son, okay, okay. Look, we'll take it. We ain't playing. Black and blue clickbait, yeah, I don't know, man. That was in there, up against the wall. I think so. <laughs> Ryan and Julio said we picked the wrong spot. Look, we're on a boys. Clickbait it is on a uh, jerkbait video. Wouldn't you love that? <laughs> Let's make that happen again. I know there's another one over here. Can't lie to me. Oh, golly, that cast was messed up. Just slow and steady. Oh, there he is. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, he took my tail. He took my tail. He had the tail and then I set the hook, but he didn't have the hook. He just grabbed the back. That is not good. The bite is hot. I do not have time for this. I guess I'm going to take the saucy swimmer off of this. Ryan's got a fish. Look, man, the bite is hot. We got to get back in here. I just took off the saucy swimmer from one of my other baits. So what I'm doing is I'm rigging it upside down. That way, hopefully, it will stay on here just a little bit better. Yeah, this isn't going to last long. It's kind of torn up. I've, I've, I've uh, gotten a couple bass on this Saucy Swimmer already, and it's kind of on its last leg. But that's all we need. We literally just need a couple casts out of it. It's feeding time. Are you getting grass on yours every once in a while or no? I was going to say, and you probably know, but like if you stop feeling the blade work, you're throwing the chatterbait still, right? Yeah. If you stop feeling that blade work and it's just weight, 
kind of like give it a little firm pull with the rod and you'll get back to where you feel the blade again. Usually you kind of rip that grass off of there. Yeah, you definitely want to feel it. You want to hold that rod like, like 45 degrees and you want to feel that flutter. If you don't feel the flutter, then it's not working like it should. And you want to kind of like go like this, kind of like get that grass off of there or, or uh, swim it a little faster and get it off the ground a little bit. That's key. That vibration is what brings them in. Oh, got him, got him. The biggest one yet, maybe. Might be. He's feeling all right. He's feeling all right. Get a look at this, man. He, yeah, come on. He's not huge, but I think he's the biggest one of the day. I think he's gonna go for two and a half, maybe three. Let me get him in the shallows. Oh, I mean, this is a fish right here. Oh, he's looking good. He is looking good. He's looking real good. Oh, biggest one of the night. Yeah, that's a fat two and a half -er right there. Okay, look at that hook set. Oh, wow, it was loose too. You see how there's that opening right there? Sometimes you set the hook a little too hard. That's why you gotta keep the line tight, man. You can give these fish no slack because this is just gonna pop right out, literally effortless absolutely effortless so you got to keep the line tight whenever you hear somebody saying tight lines they're saying don't give these fish any slack because if i didn't keep that fish pinned the whole time that hook would have came right out as soon as the head shook so that's why you saw me kind of walking back against the bank trying to keep it tight trying to make sure i'm cranking until i didn't have too much line out wow that that fish could have gotten away from me okay in the water and on to fish number number four thank you buddy big in let's go let's go get in there anywhere over there seems to be all right you can even let it sit for a second like uh like let it fall just for a second if you go far out yeah let it sit for like one second all right go ahead start cranking yeah a little slower feel that blade yeah yep 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 easy easy yes you got one it's swimming away from it's swimming bro you have one don't you oh my lord that was first cast over here there's no way, Dory's hooked up right off the bat, bros. He's throwing the white, uh, white chatterbait. Yo, yo. Is it taking any of your drag out or no? A little bit. A little bit, okay, 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 okay. What, what do you have on the hook, dude? He's hanging out low. You got a big one. Dude, you got a big one. Oh my God. If you want to take him over here in the shallows or if you got it right there, how strong is your line? 12. 12, yeah, you might grab him. No way. No way! Dude, that might be bigger than my last one. What Appreciate the heck? Hey, yes! Hey, man. Yes! All right, That's you? what we're talking about. Look at that. I appreciate it. This might be, mm. a, this might be a PB for me. That's a big one. You, you, do you know your PB weight or no? Don't. You don't? I don't? Well, we got to put it on the scale. Do you have one or no? Don't have I got one. one. I think, I, think I have one. I, I think I have one. It's in kilograms, which is fine. We don't, we don't care. You got Yeah, you can let go of this thing. Yeah, it's got you. Is it not reading? 1.64. This is kilograms. Hold on. Okay. Hey Siri, how many pounds is 1.64 kilograms? 1.64 kilograms is 3.62 pounds. Dude, that's a big, that's a big urban bass. That's like, that's that's over three and a half. That's almost four. It's closing in. Three and six two. Yo, yes, of course. That's sick. Okay. Are we missing anything? I think we're good. It's gonna be off the chain. Congrats, bro. Let's get some more. Let's get it. Uh, here's your tech before I lose oh. it. It doesn't get any bigger than that until you got four or five pounds on the bank. <laughs> That's a big bass, dude. That's a big one. So when you're done with that cast, let me just, I'm just going to see the drag. Yeah, big one, he'll take you. So we're going to crank it up a little bit, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to dial it in. All right, that's pretty tight. That might be too, because since it's lighter line, uh -huh when you set the hook or if you get a big one, now it's not gonna have as much give. They could break you off with the okay. lighter line, but this- Still be a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back off just a little bit, just a little bit. Not that one there, that was too loose right there. That, that, that was too, yeah. that was too loose. Yeah, you want it to be like, I mine is pretty much locked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly how right. it feels. Like this, you should, you, if you should be winning the battle. Right. You might see uh, like somebody In who's, if they got, yeah, if they got one on and they feel like they're not making progress, right. you might see them kind of, you might see them do a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure it should be hard to pull. Like usually mine's not really even pulling. Okay. But I would recommend if you if you really crank it down to where you it's like pretty tough to get mm -hmm. it to move, 15 pound line or heavier. Just okay. because when you when you smack them, it might break. Right. If you want to cast back in there, there might be more, dude. That was that was two or three out of the same spot. New PV. That was so epic. Can we get a congratulations for the man in the comments, please? And here we are thinking we weren't gonna catch nothing after 
moving to the third spot it's been cold in texas yeah we did get yelled at we got kicked out what hasn't happened in today's video now to be fair whenever i meet up with somebody for the first time it's usually not like that <laughs> yeah so some people would say you might be lucky you got it in just because of how loose the drag was because because if he's taking you he can he can shake and there's a little slack and that's all it takes for them to kind of get loose from the hook so so you yeah that was good hey they're hanging out under the bridge yeah on these two it's good to have the rod tip pretty close to the water yep because if you have it up here you're going to be bringing it up to the surface you want them to stay under the surface a little bit so down low and at like a 45 is the best way to best way to use them you know when you see somebody working a texas rig it's like straight up when you see somebody working a jerk bait or like like a, usually even the flukes too or the chatterbait that you want it close to the water right i learned fast because i uh posted a lot of videos doing stuff the wrong way and everyone's like that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. <laughs> it's funny how quick you learn if you uh, put videos out there. <laughs> Everyone is a pro in the comments section. You're not doing it right, man. No way. He's got him. He's got him. Fish number two. Look, he's taking you deep. Dude, he's taking you deep. <laughs> What's going on out here? That's fish number two. Okay, a little bit smaller, maybe. Oh, look at him. He's bang clipping him now. Don't even care. <laughs> White chatterbait, man. That's dope. Fish number two, all right. He's trying to triple up now. He's trying to go for three next. Dude, this is crazy. Come on over. You want this? I'll throw a jig. Yeah, especially in the winter, you want to be going a little slow. Well, I mean, you know, it's warm today, but like the water temp's still cold. So usually you'll hear people going a little bit slower. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not like you're reeling it so fast that it's staying close to the top. You want it to stay down a little bit. Oh, nope, just kidding. Now, when it heats up a little bit in the spring, you can do anything. It will all work. Yeah, it will all work. They'll be coming up to feed before they start mating and everything, right? Before they start spawning. And so like when that happens, you can work stuff out. Like the water's starting to warm up and they're getting aggressive. That might've been what's even happened here, like right before that cold spell hit, cause it was getting warmer. Like all these fish were getting ready to start spawning. So like pre-spawn, but um, with the cold weather, it kind of slowed them down a little bit. Now that it's getting warmer these last couple days, maybe this, this water's probably the hottest it's been in like a week or two. They're probably like, okay, let's eat. We might've literally just hit it on the right day. You can come here tomorrow and catch nothing. S same bait, same spot, I promise. Uh, you know, I fished this spot a handful of times and caught nothing. And then I've had a couple days where I catch, I haven't been here that many times, but where I catch like, you know, four or something like that. This is probably the best session. What I was thinking, like my mindset is like the sun has been on the rock. And so maybe it heats the water close to it. And maybe that causes some of the bait, like the, okay, Ryan's on. Dude, they're, they're chilling over here. That's over two pounds, but from a distance, I can't tell how much over. That might be three, I can't even tell. Yeah, as it starts warming up in spring, I'm gonna be fishing shallower. Like usually when it's this cold out, I don't normally think the bank. I normally think they're out there, they're a little deeper, and they're trying to find some warmer water and they kind of hug in a deep pocket. That usually is how it happens. In spring, they're gonna be along the bank. In summertime, they usually go out deep too because the, the water kind of flips. It's really weird, but like the surface temps will be super hot and there's some colder water out deep. But in the winter time, the surface temps are super cold because the cold's getting to it and there's warmer water out deeper. It's like it flips. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those things like spring and fall, you're catching them along the bank, they're feeding, they're aggressive. So yeah, it's like, it's about to be prime time as far as like how many fish you catch every time you go out. Yeah, for a couple months. Probably March and April will be very good unless it's like weird weather with the rain and the cold. You'll love it. And then, and then after that comes like the actual spawn where you'll see the bass right here in front of you. They'll be on their beds and you're just like, you're throwing like a Texas, you'll be throwing like a Texas rig with a crawl. You, you'll see one right here and you'll be like, you'll be back a little bit and you'll kind of get on in there and then you'll just pop, pop, boom. <laughs> it gets crazy, man. You're going to like it. Some of them will make their beds like right here. Usually the male is guarding the bed and the female is close by. And if you see the big one, it's the female. The male might be, dude, the male might be one to three pounds and the female might be like eight, like five to eight. I'm not trying to like, in a pond like this, you'll probably see a female might be three, four or five. Every pond's different though. So you might, one pond in the neighborhood has got them on beds. And then the next one, there's nothing on them yet because the water temperature hasn't warmed up enough for them to start the process. I'm gonna switch it up just to try something different. I messed up, I tied my Texas rig onto my fluke setup and I didn't put a weight on there. You guys wanna learn how to waste time, just watch my videos. I heard something. Dude, dude, we've all caught a fish. Yes, Julio's on dudes, it is a party out here. All right, the Texas rig's tied on. Everyone has caught a fish. It's been an epic day. We're just gonna try and close things out with something a little bit different for y'all. So I'm gonna throw out a Texas rig. I got a crawfish on here and I'm throwing the Okeechobee craw. So it's got that blue flash, almost exactly like the, uh, the clickbait I was throwing. Quarter ounce Wu tungsten weight. 
and I believe this is a four aught Guggen Squad hammer hook. That is the setup. Still throwing the go-to rods. So versatile, man. I'm telling you, if you ain't got one, go get one. Let me see if I can get another one on the bank. I'm gonna cast out a little bit deeper. I kind of know their pattern. They seem to be up against the walls and uh, that seems to be the deal. But I'm gonna see if I can change the game up and just identify, maybe there's a 10 pounder in this thing. Maybe he, uh, maybe he or she is hanging out deep. Back to back. I just turned off the GoPro and here Ryan goes with another one. Oh my, oh, and it came off the hook. Oh my gosh, that's some luck and skill right there. I'm just gonna work them along. Yeah, so like I keep the line tight so I can feel the bites, right? No slack. And so as I lower the rod tip, I crank in that slack. I'm not like bringing it in, dragging them along the bottom. I'm just bringing in the, the line as I lower the rod. So I'm keeping it tight. And then I usually, once I get to about like this position right here, pop it a couple times, let them hop along the bottom like a little crawl. And then I wait for a bite. Yeah, and just kind of working it, popping it along the bottom nice and slow. And sometimes that's a little high too, because you get you want to get to about, you know, you get to about right here. And then if one hits, then like, where are you going to go with it? You're going to like have to like do a backflip. You know what I mean? If I feel a little tug, I crank down, then I go for the hook set. Yeah. But that takes time because a lot of people, if they start feeling, if they start feeling some bites in the rods here, they're like, oh God. Oh God. Oh, broke me off. Got a bite. Yep. It's because I'm using a 12 pound leader. Normally I'm going like 17 pound. He took the whole 12 pound leader. That was a good tug. Clickbait, baby. <laughs> I'm going back. Well, that's unfortunate. I was trying to show y'all how to work a Texas rig and I showed you how not to work it. Man, I'm telling you, we are dishing out the tips. <laughs> I was just talking about that too, how when you set the hook with lighter line, see, that's what you got to watch out for. I'm using the same pound line as you were for the leader. I have like braid for the main line, but see, it's just snapped because it wasn't strong enough. If it was 17 or 20, that would have been just fine. I can promise you this is not going to snap. I will pull a tree limb off the tree with this thing. If, if this gets stuck in a tree, the tree loses. He said, yeah, boss, they're still here. I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is, son, right at sunset. Okay. And they say they don't eat straight braid. <laughs> You must be kidding. And she feels all right. Look at him bending that go-to rod. He's taking drag. Right, he's taking drag. Oh, beans in Dallas, Fort Worth, baby. Get you some of that for the tube. Well, this might be the one to close it out. Sunset has hit, and uh, we better split. <laughs> Peace. All right, man, wrapping up an epic evening. It was absolutely insane. The boys are going to be linked down below. I had a blast. We all caught some fish. Y'all have a good time? Yes, yes sir. sir. We own it, baby. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> what we're here for. Drop a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. We had uh, some bank fishing in line. We've been on the boat lately. We've been on the yaks a little bit. Uh, what else do you guys want to see? We had a blast. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>